Hey gang, Big Papa here. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Parenting Matrix. And man, do I have an exciting episode for you. I have been scouring YouTube and I have come across a channel that is very cool. It is jam-packed with some really powerful um, little clips of uh, behavior events, behavior challenges. I think you guys are going to love them. So let's get right to it. Now these clips are short. So if Big Papa doesn't ramble on and on and on, this is actually going to be a pretty short episode, but we'll see because you guys know I like to talk. Let's just go on over to our video. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can make this a little bigger. Bam. Make Big Papa a little bigger. All right, let's see what we got here. So, let me let you know, this is a family setting at dinner, Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, so the dad and the son are arguing, teenage son, and one of the other boys, a little older, I'm, I'm assuming, is videoing. Um, this comes from uh, McJurger Nuggets. So there's a lot of these videos. Um, I'm not going to spoil it by saying anything anything else, but McJurger Nuggets right there. These guys are awesome. 23, almost 24 million, 24 million views on this video. And you're going to see quickly um, why so many people are interested in watching it. I'm not saying that, dude. I think it's stupid. Well, I know you can't force religious beliefs on me. Oh, nobody forced me out on it. Yeah, you kind of are. It's just a home video. We do it all the time. It's fine. It's every year. We're going to look back on this and we're going to enjoy it and laugh and everything. It's fine. You're just doing this on my marriage. Yeah, yeah. All right. Bow your head. All right. So. We have Thanksgiving, right? Other family members there. Dad is obviously pissed at the kid for something. You know, he, maybe he doesn't want to say grace. He doesn't want to pray. Maybe dad asked him to say the prayer. The kid said, I'm not going to do that. That's a trigger for dad. And so the, the, the bickering has already began. Um, we don't know the background. We don't know the history. We don't know where these kind of um, exchanges usually end up with this dad and this son, but we know that um, so far it's not going to be good. Anxiety is already high. You have extended family members, which means so any anytime you're working with traumatized children, you have to remember that their stress response systems, their stress reaction systems are sensitive to sensory input. So let's say this kid has some kind of trauma experience. We know he's already going to be elevated. He's going to already be escalated. So let's continue on here. Dear Lord, bless the food that's in front of us. Thank you, dear Lord, for all the family that is around the table. And dear Lord, please, I emphasize, please find Jesse a job come Monday morning. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. Real funny, Dad. Make me look like a stupid idiot in front of the whole family. Okay, so let's just pause for a minute. I'm going to back it up because I want to I want to make sure we know the right context before we follow through with Dad's prayer. I'm not saying that shit. I think it's stupid. Yes. Yeah, so dad said to the son, Will you say grace? Stupid. Well, I know you can't force something. religious beliefs on me. Oh, nobody forced me out on it. Yeah, you kind of are. It's, it's just a home video. We do it all the time. It's fine. He does this every year. He does it on day two. Mama, we're going to look back on this and we're going to enjoy it and laugh and everything. It's fine. Everybody has to say grace. You're just doing this on my marriage. Yeah, yeah. All right. Bow your head. Dear Lord, bless the food that's in front of us. Thank you, dear Lord, for all the family that is around the table. And dear Lord, please, I emphasize, please find Jesse a job come Monday morning. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Real funny, Dad. Make me look like a stupid idiot in front of the whole family. It wasn't funny. It was you just now we know Dad's super stressed, right? And this is this is actually. This is actually not uncommon with a lot of parents who, who are dealing with traumatized children and challenging children. So dad got his feelings hurt because the son 
um, didn't want to say the prayer. And, and dad probably got a little embarrassed too because because of his son's reaction. How many times as a parent have you gotten, you know, embarrassed or a little ashamed, a little red in the face because your child says or does something that you know is ultimately socially inappropriate? So dad's, dad's gotten a little upset. So he says this prayer and then he takes this pot shot at the child where he says, God, please, please help him get a job. Well, now we've gone from, and this isn't just that, to me, it's a very important sequence because I feel like we do this a lot as adults when it comes to children. Dad is stressed from the child not wanting to say the prayer. Now he's adding, he's layering on, please get a job. So it's, it's, it, we have a tendency to become stressed and to become overwhelmed. And then what we do is we layer it on. So if you think about stress causes confused and distorted thinking, suppress the short-term memory. Now we're laying, layering on the stress, and now let's watch and see what we get. This all the time. I know. Sarcasm makes me look stupid. Yes, all we want is a job. That's all we need. Yeah. Yeah. And it worked for you. That's not a job. That's not good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. That's plenty good enough. Could you, you just, just say something what? that you're thankful for? It's Thanksgiving. You I'm not playing that. his game. Why are you taking his side of the game? I'm, I'm just trying to keep the peace. Let's just let's say something that you're thankful okay. for. Yeah, no. All right. Uh, do I have to pull my hands and look up to the just, heavens and get on my knees? It would be nice. Please, please God. Like, oh, I'm, I'm grateful for... All right, yeah, no, okay, let's do it, let's do it. I'm grateful, um, I'm grateful for the food. I think it looks good. Walmart does a bang up job, I love it. It looks so good. And I'm grateful for video games, if we're being honest, and um, I'm grateful for uh, Halo came out recently, and I look up to Master Chief. I, he's kind of my hero. Um, I love him. Not that anyone would understand. And I'm grateful for mom for buying me an Xbox One after my dick of a dad destroyed it. So you don't Ooh, appreciate it. Hey, threw her under the bus. You don't appreciate it. Oh, we sorry. Yeah, you. put you in the spot there. Not you, you looking back. What the heck? If you're not going to act right around there, be part of the family. You want to make a scene during Thanksgiving. Yeah, really? I do. Because if you don't want to be oh, part God. of the family, then get out. You're I'm not like part of the family the way you act. Oh, boy. I'm not part of the family. No. You don't act right. You're not part of the family. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you don't turn me at me. Oh, my Lord. And you're filming. God, I'm so good. You're not good. Yeah, what's your name? No. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And you, I hope you got your great Thanksgiving video. What a great family this is. Piece of shit. I'm thankful for it. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. Should we help? Okay. I'm so sorry. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Roll out. Roll out. I know. Happy Thanksgiving. Go Eagles. All right. That was good, huh? Now we'll back it up. I'm not saying that shit. I think it's stupid. Well, I know you can't force religious beliefs on you. Oh, nobody's forcing that on you. Yeah, you kind of are. It's yeah. just a home video. We do it all the time. It's fine. We're going to look back on this. We're going to enjoy it, laugh, and everything. It's, it's fine. So I'm all the time preaching to, to parents. We have to practice prevention. If you don't practice prevention, you're always intervening. And so if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And this is a classic example 
of a father who's already stressed, who's not recognizing his child's stress, and he's actually the one escalating the situation. He wants his child to pray. His child doesn't want to pray. And so in, instead of just leaving it alone, dad's continuing to badger. Now, how does dad badger? Well, he starts with the fact that his son doesn't want to pray, so he's already setting up an embarrassing, di- an embarrassing dynamic amongst the rest of the family members. But then the next thing he does is he talks about the job. Please help him get the job. Well, it turns out that the child is actually working for the dad, so theoretically he already has a job. So it's really uh, an adolescent and unnecessary comment um, to the young man, which then just starts to escalate the situation. Next, we see mom chime in. What you're going to notice is that mom doesn't, doesn't try to calm dad. She doesn't say, honey, just leave it alone. Honey, it's okay. She doesn't look at the son and try to regulate him and say, hey, we're okay. Let's just enjoy dinner. She actually goes in at the child. So then now you've got another stressor coming at him. Now I want to tell you guys that this is what we do when we are stressed. In times of stress, our thinking becomes confused and distorted and our short-term memory is suppressed. We get in these negative feedback loops, these conditioned patterns. I call them negative feedback loops because they're negative neurophysiologic feedback loops where we're actually sending these vibrations back and forth to one another. So in a negative neurophysiologic feedback loop, what happens is one one person's amygdala, which is your fear receptor in your brain, sends a stress vibration. That stress vibration hits the other person's amygdala. Then they send back a bigger stress vibration, and then it just continues. The stress vibrations just get bigger and bigger and bigger until it just consumes the whole environment, and then everyone stressed out. So this is a perfect example of watching a conditioned negative, feed, negative neurophysiologic feedback loop in action, in play, and the outcome. So let's watch when mom chimes in, and let's see how she directs her attention. So now we have a power and control dynamic. So the child feels helpless. He already knows he's, he's kind of at dad's will. Dad says, yeah, I'm doing it because it's my table. It's my house. Bow your head. And so now we've got the, the threat dynamic is fully, is fully at play. Thank you, dear Lord, for all the family that is around the table. And dear Lord, please, I emphasize, please find Jesse's job on Monday morning. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Real funny, Dad. Made me look like a stupid idiot in front of the whole family. It wasn't funny. We do this all the time. I Sarcasm know. makes me look stupid. Now it's just going to continue to escalate. So now the situation is going to continue to escalate. The young man has, has, al- has already, he's already stated. Now I feel embarrassed. So what could what could happen in this scenario? Very easily, dad could say, after taking a few deep breaths, I'm sorry, son, I shouldn't have said that. That was inappropriate. Bam, ends it. Mom could say, honey, now you know that that wasn't fair and that wasn't polite, honey. I'm sorry your dad did that. Now that might actually cause dad to get a little upset. So that's probably why mom's not going to say that. But what it would do is it would regulate the son. Dad is an adult. Dad needs to be able to regulate himself. And so by mom saying, by mom saying to the husband, look, that wasn't okay, she's actually defending the child, keeping the child emotionally safe, or at least at least allowing the child to feel like someone has their best interest in mind. But that doesn't happen. Jess, all we want is a job. That's all we need. Yeah, that worked for you. That's not a job. That's not good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. That's plenty good enough. Could you just, gonna, just say something what? that you're thankful for? It's Thanksgiving. See, now mom's trying to keep the peace. She Now she's going back to the kid just doing what dad asked him to do when it came to praying, right? So again, it wasn't enough to honor anything about where the child was at or what the child what he desired because the truth is they could have just left him alone but it just continues to focus on him at this point i'm not playing his game why are you taking this side of the game i'm just just trying to keep the peace let's just just say something that you're thankful for yeah no all right uh do i have to how often is one spouse trying to keep the peace 
but in trying to keep the peace, they're always focused on the child and they're, they're not focused on the other significant adult regulatory presence in the dynamic, in the home. See, keeping the peace should be more about the adults regulating themselves and acting like adults and remembering that they have a responsibility to create security, that they have a responsibility to create understanding, that they have a responsibility to create a acceptance for their children, not one parent looking at the other child and expecting that child to behave to calm down the other parent. It's a very interesting dynamic, especially, this is so common inside the parenting matrix. And when I'm working with, with parents who are, who are, who are in our, um, inside the Parenting Matrix program trying to get out. These are the kind of things that we work through. These are the kind of events really that we hope happen so we can stop and we can review them and we can think, how could we take responsibility for this dynamic as the adults? Because taking responsibility is an outside the matrix perspective. Blaming the child is an inside the Parenting Matrix perspective. Hold my hands and look up to the heavens and get on my knees. It would be nice. Please, please God, like, oh, I'm, I'm grateful for, all right, yeah, no, okay, let's do it. So there's the additional sensory input of the older brother who's actually doing the filming. It would take either of these parents just a moment to make eye contact with that young man and ask him to stop. Please don't do that. Or honey, let's get up and let's go upstairs. And just remove him from the environment. Because whether they're acknowledging him or, acknowledging him or not, there's, sense, there's the additional sensory sarcasm, sarcasm and the energy that is coming at that child. So I'm grateful. Um, I'm grateful for the food. I think it looks good. Walmart does a bang up job. I love it. It looks so good. And I'm grateful for Video games, if we're being honest, and um, I'm grateful for uh, Halo came out recently, and I look up to the Master Chief. I, he's kind of my hero. Um, I love him. Not that anyone would understand. And I'm grateful for Mom for buying me a new Xbox One after my dick of a dad destroyed it. So you don't Ooh, appreciate that. Sure, under the bus. Oh, sorry. Did I put you in the spot there? Did no, you looking back? What the heck? <laughs> if you don't want to act right around there. Now, so let me ask you a question. You probably slightly picked up when I ran it through a minute ago, dad throwing the roll at the kid. But who set the tone for behavior escalation in the dynamic? Dad did. Look who's standing up. So it's just fascinating. But look who's standing up. Look who put his hat on. Look who got serious. Look who escalated the energy in the environment. Could dad have done any number of things at any given point in time to help regulate the situation? Of course he could have. Could mom have intervened in this situation at this moment? Of course she should have. Could other adults have intervened? Yeah, but that's probably not their role, not their place. And that could potentially escalate situations even more. Or maybe not. Maybe someone could say, hey, could we all, hey guys, I think I'm going to head out. Just one adult stepping up and said, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave because this feels really stressful could have interrupted the dynamic enough to, to at least bring dad back to a state of regulation. But really no one's doing anything. It's just escalating. Dad has already acted out by throwing the role at the young man and let's see what happens next. Be part of the family. You want to make a scene during Thanksgiving. Yeah, really? I do. Because if you don't want to be oh, part God. of the family, then get out. Now dad just threatened the, little, the, 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 the young man, told him to get out. If you don't want to be a part of the family, get out. I'm not sure at what point the young man was expressing that he didn't want to be a part of the family. So dad, in dad's confusion and overwhelm, he just escalated the dynamic by telling the child to get out. That's like a threat of abandonment. That's like the ultimate threat. John Bowlby said the, the fear of loss, is the threat of loss is equal to loss itself. So just a threat. Of, of abandonment, just a threat of not being good enough, just a threat of you're not going to have a home here, you don't have a home here, is enough to make the child experience the loss as if it has already happened. So just the threat alone is enough to send a child into a heightened state of overwhelm. I'm not part of the family the way you act. Oh, boy. 
I'm not part of the family? No. You don't act right, you're not part of the family. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. So now, so again, dad's second. Now we're going to see it. Dad's second assault on a young man. The first is the role. And you may say, dad throwing the role at the young man isn't really assault. Energetically, dad throwing that role at that kid is, is, is no different than if he had reached across there and smacked him upside the head. It's got the same energy behind it. He just didn't do it physically with his hand. But by throwing that role, it is the same energetic vibrational experience for this young man he's completely overwhelmed now he's flipped the table over now dad's throwing the turkey now the whole situation has gone to hell in a handbasket so there's really not anything we're going to do at this point it's already escalated we may be able to salvage one other table but at the end of the day it's ruined already <laughs> Oh my lord! And you're filming! I'm so done! I'm done! I'm done! I'm done! And you, I hope you got your great Thanksgiving video! What a great family this is! Piece of shit! I'm thankful for it. Fuck you! <laughs> And then the kid finishes off by stowing his glasses and he looks like he does need he does need glasses. And then everyone else is obviously remorseful. And so inside the parenting matrix, guys, this is just classic. I mean, this is classic. Um, this is, this is a classic experience that families have every single day across America inside the parenting matrix. Dynamics like this are happening at mealtime every time. And this is why, quite honestly, why families don't have meal times together because they're not able to regulate enough to make it a relaxed meal. We've forgotten what it means like and what it, what it means and what it feels like to have family meals together. And family meals are so important. In fact, it has been estimated that children who come from homes that do family meals actually have higher intelligence than, than, than children who come from homes where there are not family meals. And we spend so much time these days watching television while we're eating or, or children eating in their rooms or, or playing on the computer or being on their phones that we have forgotten what it means to be able to sit down communicate, have respect, share, um, just, 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 just be with one another. We've just forgotten what that feels like. And then ultimately inside the parenting matrix, no one's taking responsibility. And who's responsible? We as the adults are responsible. We the parents are responsible. By any given time, all we've got to do is slow down, calm ourselves down, move out of fear, step into love, Think about how we can take responsibility. Be willing to apologize when we've messed up. Dad messed up when he asked the child to pray and he put him on the spot. The child got embarrassed, but then dad didn't respect his son's opinion. And the, the truth of the matter is teenagers are entitled to their opinion like we are all entitled to our opinion. So we should value and honor that opinion and then discuss it later at some other time. Obviously at the Thanksgiving table is not the best place to do it but we don't do it and then dad takes the other jab and it just continues and then you know the situation just explodes so that's it guys that's just another quick view and another quick glimpse inside the parenting matrix and how you could do something different and really in any given situation we always have two choices we can continue to operate inside the parenting matrix and do the same fear-based of blueprints, generational blueprints and historical patterns of parenting that we've had for years and years and decades and generations, or we can stop, we can take three to 10 deep breaths, we can slow down and we can choose love. God bless you, Big Papa loves you, and we'll see you next time on Inside the Parenting Matrix.